class, today we're going to talk about combinations. A combination is a selection of objects in which order is not important. The last section, we worked on permutations, and that's where order is important. Now we're going to talk about when it's not. Let's see how this relates. All right, for example, let's count the combinations of two letters from the list A, B, C, D. So I made a list of two letter combinations using each letter. So I started with A, and I combined A with B, with C, and then with D. Then I started with B, and I combined it with the other three letters, A, C, and D. Then I went to C, and then I went to D. Notice that I used the systematic pattern to make sure I reached all. Now if this were a permutation, order is important, that A, A, B, is, it, is different than BA? For example, maybe the first one is a president and the second one is a vice president. So then A would be different than, I'm sorry, AB would be different than BA because student A is the president, student B is the vice president. And in this case, student B is the president and student A is the vice president. But here where it's not important, BA and AB are paired and they're the same thing. It's like if I were giving two students um, a free 100, I don't know, anything, that these two students, Ashley and Ben, or Ben and Ashley, it doesn't matter. They're the same thing. So for order not being important, they both count. But when order, I'm sorry, when order not being important, only one of them can count. So A, B, and B, A is the same thing. Order doesn't matter. So I need to cross that one off. A, C, and C, A. Same thing, cross that one off. A, D, and D, A, same thing, cross that one off. Now, B, C, and C, B, same thing, cross that one off. B, D, and D, B, same thing. And lastly, C, D, and D, C, same thing. So then there are six possible combinations. Here's my one, two, three, four, five, six combinations okay so that would be the answer if I asked you this question count the combinations of two letters from the list of ABCD using combinations right and count the combinations you would have six possible combinations okay so this is one way to do it where you have a small amount and you can write it out and cancel the repeats but there's actually a formula that you can use So the number of combinations of n objects taken r at a time, we have n, c, r, c for combinations, is n factorial over n minus r factorial times r factorial. So if we ignore this r factorial, that's permutations. But because we're multiplying by an extra r factorial, you're taking care of the doubles. So you're dividing out that repeat. So for example, a number of combinations of four objects taken two at a time is 4c2. So then I have 4 factorial over 4 minus 2 factorial times 2 factorial. Whoop! <laughs> so I have 4 factorial over 4 minus 2 is 2. So I have 2 factorial times 2 factorial. And then as you know, 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And 2 factorial is 2 times 1. And 2 factorial is 2 times 1. So there's a lot of canceling A out that happens. I'm going to rewrite this. So I have 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 2 times 1 times 2 times 1. The numerator is the 4 factorial. The denominator is each of those factorials, 2 times 1 and 2 times 1. So some things happen. My 2's cancel. My 1's are 1's, it doesn't matter. My 4 divided by 2 will be turned into 2 over 1. And then in my num denominator, everything's gone. In my numerator, I just have 2 times 3, which is 6. Or you could have multiplied it all the way through. 4 factorial is 24. 2 times 2 factorial is 2, 2 factorial is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 24 divided by 4 is 6, so either way. 
All right, let's use some real life stuff. This really happens all the time. We get sandwiches and we get sides to choose from. So, and if you're like me, you have a hard time deciding anything, especially some sides. That's me. All right. So another example, you order a sandwich at a restaurant. You can choose two sides from a list of eight. How many combinations are possible? So here's my example. If you look here, here's my sandwich. And then I have choices of sides. These are only two choices. I have eight choices. And if I turn my plate, it doesn't matter which order they're in, right? The, the noodles could be on this side and the fries could be on this side. Either way, on my plate, I've got fries and noodles. So that's how I know it's a combination. Okay, so I have combinations, not permutations, because order doesn't matter. So I have eight choices and two to choose from. So eight objects, two at a time. Eight factorial I'm sorry, 8C2 is 8 factorial over 8 minus 2 factorial times 2 factorial. 8 factorial over 6 factorial times 2 factorial. Then I'm going to realize that things are going to cancel. If I keep going with this 8 factorial all the way through, I will cancel the 6, the 5, the 4, the 3, the 2, the 1. Or you could just realize that 8 times 7 times 6 factorial is the same thing as 8 factorial because it's, 6 factorial is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So then it's an easier way to cancel out big numbers. So I have 8 times 7 in the uh, numerator and the denominator of 2 times 1. And you could do some canceling where you have 8 divided by 2 and that's 4 and 4 times 7 is 28. Or you just multiply straight across like I did. 8 times 7 is 56 and 2 times 1 is 2. 56 divided by 2 is 28. So that means there are 28 combinations you could you can have by ordering a sandwich at this restaurant. Wow, 28 combinations, that's a lot. All right, cool. All right, last thing is probability. We gotta throw that in. This whole chapter is about probability. Probability and combinations. So Mrs. Kang randomly chooses two out of 14 students to get candy every day. That's nice. What is the probability that Mrs. Kang chooses you and your friend? So the way this works is you first find your total. Your total is the 14 choose two, the 14 combination two. 14 choices, 14 objects, choosing two of them. Two because it's you and your friend. So you have 14 factorial over 14 minus 2 factorial times 2 factorial, which is 14 factorial over 12 times factorial times 2 factorial, which is 14 times 13 times 12 factorial. Then these will cancel, and you have 14 times 13 and 2 times 1, which you could do some dividing out, which is 7 times 13, which is 91, or just multiply. 14 times 13 is 182, 2 times 1 is 2. Divide, you get 91. So that's my total. That's the total. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for the probability. So probability is the success over or the number of favorable outcomes over the total. So I know my denominator. I need my favorable outcomes. So there's only one combination of you and your friend getting picked. It's either you and your friend, you and this guy, you and that girl. Um, or them and not you, you know, oh, there's 14 students, so there's a lot of combinations, uh, 91, and but there's only one combination of the two of you, so that would be one out of 91, and that's your probability. Yay!